Right, let's take a quick morning walk through the garden. So this is an assortment of things, cabbage, lettuce, basil, etc. Nothing's really happening in there. I mean, we do have a lot of stuff sprouting, but nothing really growing that well. I think it's down to the soil uh, because I use this same soil in this bed over here. It's just a different brand of soil than usual, uh, potting soil, and it really did not do well. It was a above ground bed and container mix rather than a potting mix. Didn't do very well. I think also it's just odd brand. It could also be these uh, Fuja. So these, they're called Western Red Cedar. They contain a compound called uh, Thujic Acid. And I kind of wonder if that restricts plant growth because if you look over here next to the Thuja with needles falling in it, we took down some branches, but there have been needles falling in this bed a lot, and it seems to be kind of restrained, and same with this one. And if you look at this one, which hasn't gotten quite as many of those needles in it, it's doing great, but it also has different soil. So there's two variables that could be contributing to one bed doing better than the other. But this is a lettuce bed. It's doing amazing. We've been eating off this pretty much every day, and it's growing back almost as fast as we can eat it, so really great. I'm going to have to let some of that go to seed, though, since it's doing so well. Okay, so what do we got over here now? Well, we got the foundation for the addition. Yes, awesome. I'm going to try to finish the framework for the floor today. So we'll have a floor, and then we can go from there and see what we're going to do next. Probably finish the framing, then put plywood up under it, and then put insulation, and then plywood over it, thicker plywood, so be like utility board or something underneath, and then proper plywood on top for a floor. Um, and then we can put whatever we want for the floor. I thought about also just doing a floor made out of the cedar. It's not a bad idea. We have plenty of it, just cedar boards. Anyway, I'm also kind of at the, at the stage where I want to just get it done. So, I'm not sure. This is a squash. It's fruiting, or flowering rather. Look at it. It's really happy. It's doing great. It's planted into a mound, so this mound is always dry. So that's one challenge, actually keeping this mound wet um, because it drains so well. And this is, I think, a problem you would find with Hugel culture is that it's basically what this is. It's planted into a bunch of decaying wood and it is so hard to keep that wet. It takes so much water and takes a lot more nutrients than everything else too. So, because the thing is that wood uses up nitrogen when it decays, that's part of the process. Here's a bell pepper. It's doing pretty well. All the pepper plants, really all the plants in this garden have seen some pretty nasty drought pressure because there have just been times where I was out of water, it was late at night, rather than trying to run to the creek, get water, and come back and water everything all late at night. I just said, screw it, I'll wait until the morning. And that was enough for them to wilt a little bit. Or I had to run to work, do work for a client or whatever, and then stuff wilted a bit. Because it's been very hot and very dry. There's not a, not a cloud in the sky. So it's been a very dry time. That's expected in this area in summer, but it's a little bit drier than usual, I think. This is another bell pepper. It's doing great. Another squash. Native, I think this is native weeds. I don't remember. This might be an invasive, but at some point I needed to do something to just beat that back a little bit because we don't want it in here. Same with this one. This is a lettuce, again, growing in the native soil. All of this, this area of the garden is all native soil. It's my experiment to see if I could grow in native soil effectively, because in my life in New Mexico, I never grew anything really in native soil successfully, so I thought I would give it a shot here, and so far it's been pretty good. This is a poblano. I think this isn't doing as well as the potted pepper, but I think if you base it off of just being in the native soil, generally speaking, my experience has been that Hot peppers seem to do better in hot weather than sweet peppers. And I think the same with people. Um, so that's my anecdotal evidence idea there. 
There's a lettuce. It's doing fine. It's not really doing much, but it's doing fine. There's a another bell pepper. So that's a bell pepper in the native soil versus a bell pepper in the potting soil, organic potting soil. So big difference there, but still doing fine. Here's a, another lettuce, another lettuce, another lettuce. They're all doing okay. It's growing really slowly. I think it's just so hot right now. Um, there's a point at which you cross over about 95 degrees. Plants, most plants that we like to eat, especially like warm season crops, if you're talking, narrow it down to warm season, it's like 60 degrees to 95 degrees. Otherwise they're not growing. Uh, maybe even 65 and cold season it you can push that down to maybe 41 degrees and then anything below that they're just surviving they're not growing really um, and it's been in the upper 90s constantly so there hasn't been a lot of good chances for these things to grow they're kind of on pause which is that's the reality of what you're seeing in a lot of gardens today is things are just too hot for stuff to grow so but we're doing okay, I guess. Jalapeno here, doing all right. This is a Volkov tomato, obviously doing very well. It's a tomato tree at this point. And that's a trend with our tomatoes. We're really doing well on tomatoes. This is one of the less healthy tomatoes, but it's still doing pretty well. I don't remember what variety you are. Sun gold. Yeah, sun gold tomato, doing pretty good. I had to rip a celebrity tomato out because it got infested with something, and I still haven't figured out what that something was. I have some samples of it, but I haven't taken it to the plant clinic. I haven't researched it that thoroughly. I need to just get on PNW handbooks and try to research it myself and figure out what it is and look at it with a hand lens, because you can see the features of the bug pretty clearly, but I can't tell what it is, and I just don't want to leave a plant that's infested with something I mean, it was infested and it was doing terribly. So I figured just rip it out because it was the only one that had that kind of pest problem. So clearly wasn't a healthy plant anyways. So I just ripped it out. It wasn't gonna fruit, it was just dying. There's a cayenne, it's fine. Just not really growing much. There's a pinto bean, I think. I think all the beans here are pinto beans or no, no, they're Anasazi beans. I don't remember. I have it written down somewhere. I didn't mark them, of course. This is a, what are you? Beefsteak. Yeah, beefsteak tomatoes, apparently. Uh, at least this one didn't do that well here. And it's, I think, the only beefsteak I got. So we'll see if it uh, produces any fruit and we get any big tomatoes. It seems to be a trend, too. The modern climate is just not that hospitable to beefsteak tomatoes. You kind of grow mostly cherry tomatoes with the modern pest pressures and climate. Um, you're better off just growing small tomatoes mostly. That's a bean of some sort. Again, I'm not going to definitively declare what type of bean it is since I don't remember. That's a lettuce again. This is early grilled tomato. I think early girl is a mid-size or small, mid-size to small size tomato. This is purple basil, which seems to be coming back from the dead. As you can see there, it had completely died. I mean, wilted, it was gone. It was like just a stick sticking up out of the ground and now it seems to be coming back. So it's exciting. More weeds, really haven't done much to control weeds. I really need to come through here before everything goes to seed and distributes itself. I've just been so busy and I don't have that much help. And all the help I do get, I try to distribute into the task of, sorry about the popping there, distribute into the task of um, building the house. Um, German Johnson, there we go. This one has some of that pest. I don't know if I can get it up close. These are so small though, it's hard to look at them. Anyway, German Johnson. You probably come through here and just pluck all these pests off, whatever they are. And who knows if they're actually a pest. Um, they have kind of webby wings and they leave some kind of frassy stuff behind. And that makes me think they're probably a pest. But 
And as you can see, you know, these have a lot of tomatoes on them, this one. And this has some tomatoes on it. Yeah, so it's exciting. There's a, I don't know what variety. I'll have to get the tag for you. I might not actually have a tag on this one. Oh, no, I do. Another early girl, bush early girl. And it's doing marvelously. Tomatoes all over that thing. Here's a, probably sun gold would be my guess based on how it's fruiting. Do I even have a tag for you? Hmm. Well, I have it written down somewhere. And that one, look at that thing. See, that's the one I want to know what it is because I want to replant this because it's doing amazingly. There's a tag. Super Sweet 100. Okay, that's a hybrid, probably. That sounds like a hybrid. Uh, a F1 hybrid, so I probably, there's probably no use in planting the seeds, I would imagine. But it's a really good cultivar for this area, I guess. Because, I mean, look, it's like a tree. Muscovich. Doing okay. And that pretty much rounds out the whole garden. So, overall, things are going pretty well here. Better than I would have expected, given how hot it's been this year. And, yeah, we just have to keep things alive pretty much through the heat. And keep them watered. And that's pretty much... I imagine the experience of most people in their gardens right now and pretty common through summer these days you just have to try to keep things in enough water that they don't overheat and die and they need to be able to transpire so that they can cool themselves off a little bit here's some carrots they're growing here's some cabbage they're growing going a little bit slow i don't remember what variety this is. I think it's one of the market varieties, but I don't remember. And the carrots most likely are just some standard orange organic carrot seed. And I don't know what the variety is called. But it's all doing pretty well. So anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Or maybe we make some progress on this project.